Hey, all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon back in the saddle again, uh, bringing you some land 1.5 drop coverage. Okay, so took a week off. That's why you didn't see any videos from me last week, but uh, took a little trip out to see my brother and his family. Had a nice uh, little relaxing holiday and got back just in time for land 1.5 to go live today. Uh, I was waiting all day at work, just kind of biding my time waiting to get home. So I uh, jumped on and I started recording um, and I went through the whole process. I only have 10 plots, right? That's not a whole lot, but it took me in the neighborhood of about one and a half to two hours to jump in and learn everything because previously I had watched a couple uh, content creators online show the process uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, I never was a Mav, so I didn't get to test it on the Mav server. And due to the holiday week last week, I was not able to test it either. So I had to seen a few people go through it, but I had never myself. So I got on, I started going through the process and um, it just drug on. And as I was going through, a lot of it seemed very tedious. Um, so it kind of made a boring video. So instead, now that I have everything staked, what I want to do is I want to go back and look at what I've done and give you a shorter summation, especially if you have not taken care of land yet, or if you're just thinking about buying some land, steps to do and how to stake it out and what you need to know and this would be a much shorter kind of summary um, and I, I suppose that as we as time goes along uh, we will learn new things things will change and things will evolve and we'll try to take note of it and try to use our land uh, more efficiently um, and get the most out of it that's that's what it's all about right so okay so just to jump in the two regions I'm in are 133 and 114 okay so i jumped into tostrington and here's my plots okay so let's look at them it's easier to look at them uh, from this uh, list view okay so what i had was i have an epic caldera natural okay i have two commons which one's a plane and one's a tundra and i have a rare lake which is magic earth okay my focus uh if you've heard some of my videos before is trying to be level in other words make enough food make enough grain to not have to buy any off of the market. Okay, so that's the way I went into this. So uh, in this region, I went in with my Epic and I staked out. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. My Epic's over here. Um, we can see that I staked it out with a power core. I have building in a box on all my plots. I also have a common totem on all my plots. And then I stake them out with cards that give me a 10% bonus for the most part. I do have a couple 5% lands, but I took advantage of that percentage whenever possible. So um, one thing I will note is that when you come in to stake uh, a land and manage your land for the first, uh, first time, the first thing you should be uh, make sure you have is a power core. If you have building in a box on your land plots, you will have a power core for each building in the box. Uh, if you have a Rooney, you can also use that as a power core. If you do not, they cost 5,000 DEC each. So when you come in here, besides that, you need to know that the first thing you should do right off the bat is go up here and stake your dark energy. Now, if you have five max level cards, it's 10,000 DEC per card, okay? So that's an easy number. However, if there are lesser increments, not fully maxed out cards, then it will be less DEC. So you may have to go through the staking process to see how much DEC you need to stake. However, if you know right off the bat you have max level cards, go in with 50,000. Now, the reason I'm telling you this was the first lesson I had that was learned was that the fact if you go in here and you stake, uh, your cards and you put your power source and you put you put all this stuff into place and then you forget to uh, stake your DEC first you're gonna have to go back stake the DEC and then do all this over again so that's the first thing that will save you some time okay now the second thing I will mention right up front is after you get all this uh, after you get the DEC staked after you get your cards and your power source and your artifact stake and if you happen to have a title you can stake that as well 
and then you approve the staking. The next thing you'll need to know is um, right up front is to buy some power crystals. Now, going forward in the game, it's not necessarily going to be a black and white choice. But at this point in time, the power crystals are going to cost the same amount virtually as uh, buying grain and waiting the time. And some of these plots, especially magic plots, take an extremely long time to build out. So uh, right up front, the next lesson learned I had was the fact that they've put live on the non-card market the ability to buy power crystals. Now, you can buy them off the market, but at this point in time, you can go in on the non-card market and buy them for cheaper. And I was able to save a decent amount uh, by buying them. I'm just flipping through here, right here. You can see Actually, they're a little bit cheaper than whenever I was buying them um, about an hour ago. If this would load. And um, this has also been going on. This, their servers are getting hit hard and heavy. So I was buying them at seven cents, um, but it's a little bit cheaper, uh, 0 0.069. Either way, you're going to save uh, a decent amount um, I forget what the cutoff point is, but I think it's like 10 cents or something like that. Anything under in our, anything under nine or 10 cents per power crystal, you're going to end up saving a decent amount of money versus buying these on the market. It seems like there's some people that are selling theirs off. I don't know necessarily how they, they got all these. Maybe they bought them in packages, decided they didn't need them all, and they're selling them off, uh, what have you. Either way, um, go ahead and buy your time crystals. Um, if you know how much, how many time crystals you need all total, come in here and buy them in one bulk. However, with me, my card staking per land plot was a little di bit different each uh, on each plot. So I came back here, it was a little bit tedious, um, and bought them each for each plot. But my point is that after you come in, um, the final, the final thing you're going to have to do after you have your cards staked and everything in order is it's going to ask you to pick what you want to build okay make sure you don't automatically just click through okay you need to make sure in the top in this area right here I can't show you because I've already done it but there'll be three pictures one of three different types of houses one will be for a grain farm one for a DEC mine and the other for the research hut okay click on make sure you click that first make sure uh, it is what you want on that plot. The next thing is you're going to have to click a little box that says use time crystals and go ahead and uh, finish the building, the build out of the, the building, right? Okay, so those are my first two lessons learned. Okay, so it's nice. Uh, it gives you straight up front. Uh, whenever you do the sorting, um, when you click here, I'm not going to change anything, but when you click and you're going to go add a card, it provides a long list of basically all your cards that are available to stake on that land. And it's going to sort by the production points, okay? It's going to tell you the uh, rarity. Um, it's going to tell you the regular foil. So like me, mostly I was uh, searching for gold foils. Um, and uh, it's one of the key takeaways here is looking at this column. Right off the bat, it's going to tell you whether you whether that card gives you a bonus on that particular plot. Okay, um, I did have a spreadsheet, um, and it was, I would say, it was about eighty five percent accurate, maybe ninety percent. Um, and that's another takeaway I'll give you. Um, but there were a couple cases where. I had bought cards and they kind of got swapped into, I put them in the wrong plots so that, um, you know, I started to put a card in and then I'm like, yeah, the numbers aren't adding up right. And then I looked over and there's a little error that says you are adding a card. Um, it doesn't give you the error if you're not getting a decreased amount. However, in one particular case, I tried to, you'll notice, uh, you can reference this, you've probably seen it a hundred times, but if you try to throw a card on a land plot that gives you a negative like this, say I tried to throw a fire on a river, it would give a minus 50%, it will throw an error. Um, but obviously you want to try to get that 10% bonus on your 10% lands and the 5% on the 5% lands as much as possible. So pay attention to this column right here. Okay. So let's go back. Um, 
nice artwork. Um, the UI right here tells you how much grain you're making per hour or, you know, what have you, what you're producing. Um, you can claim it. Um, you have to claim it at least once per week. Uh, the worksite capacity will fill up and after seven days it'll be completely full and you won't be able to accept any more unless you claim. Okay. Obviously, most people are probably going to claim a lot more often than that. So um, just worth mentioning here, this is my magic plot. Um, we'll see that I'm getting 3.267 magic points per research points per hour. Um, it looks very similar to the other one. Um, this uh, has probably my most expensive card that I have staked which was a, a beta max level frozen soldier, which I, I got when I originally drew this land and uh, revealed it, and I was pretty psyched to get a rare magic land, so I went ahead and bought a decent card on there. Um, so we have these staked out as well. Um, and we'll go back. So without going into detail on each one, most of my plots have a range between about 9,500 and 12,500 production points, and that's kind of what I was shooting for. And uh, like I said, I do have two plots here that are producing food, one producing research, and one to a lesser extent uh, producing a little bit of SPS. And it looks like it's making 0.4 SPS per hour. But as we all know, as more people get up and running, um, then that value will change and it will fluctuate widely. As It's not one of those things that's going to be set. It's going to be one of those things that fluctuates as time goes along. People change their uh, production around on their different plots, etc. And going into 2.0, even... Uh, might end at some point, you know, because Matt has been talking about, and it's been a discussion topic about ending the actual production of SPS, but that's a topic for another another time. Either way, uh, both of my, we'll jump over to my other uh, region, which is 133 Ravenwood, which is uh, also Nate's main region, which is reason why I bought a bunch of plots here. I like the idea of being in the same region with um, somebody on the team. Either way, I do have I do have a common magic uh, mountain. I do have and four rares and another common river. Um, so as you can see, um, obviously the magic one I have doing research, one of the rares uh, jungle I have doing a shard mine, and the other four I have producing um, grain. Uh, that's to keep everything afloat down the road. I may change things. Um, I did run into a situation, one of my other lessons learned, and I know a lot. everybody's been talking about, I thought I was cleaned up and ready to go as far as having all of my cards that I needed to stake transferred off. I have a count that I just use for rental cards, and I had a couple there, and I was staking out one of the lands, a river, and I said, I know I have two more gold foil Pelicor bandits of max level. Where are they? So I searched around. They're on the other account. Guess what? Still rented out. So um, lesson learned there. I had to throw another, uh, a couple other cards on there for the time being until I can recoup those cards and change it around. Uh, so that's another lesson learned. So overall, I, I hope these few lessons learned help someone out. Um, as we go along, I'll be making more videos um, and hopefully picking up a few more plots. Still looking for deals here and there. I'm really interested in seeing what the prices of the plots do. Um, I think overall, I think they did a good job with the UI and the whole UX, right? Uh, I think it lends itself to being kind of tedious, but um, you don't really have to do it that often. Do it once, and then if you want to come back and revisit and upgrade your cards and stuff like that, or if you want to change it around to producing something else, um, in other words, it's tedious, but uh, you only have to do it once every once in a while, right? So it's not too bad. Um, I could see it being very, very tedious if you had a lot of plots. With that said, um, all these things I learned over a couple hours that I've been talking about, I kind of got into a rhythm towards the last few. You know what you need to do. You know, the first thing you need to go in, and if you have your power source already, then make sure you uh, stake your DEC, and then stake your power source, put your totem and your title on if you have those, 
and then go through in your sorted list and pick out the cards that you want to stake on those land plot, that land plot. Make sure you're getting the bonuses you want to get. Um, and then buying the appropriate time crystals to go ahead and complete that. And like I said, down the road, when, 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 um, as we go along and grain gets cheaper and cheaper on the market and et cetera, it probably will get to a point where it's more affordable just to go ahead and um, stake out a plot of land and let your builders build it. But right now, time crystals is a no brainer. Okay, this has been Bronze Dragon. Uh, I will see you on the flip side. Hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy and stay tuned for more land coverage. Be good. Mm -hmm.